So now we go for chapter number five, which is about complex numbers and quadratic equations. Quadratic equations you already studied in 10th standard. Let's see how we'll understand by complex numbers. So you know n here, that is set of natural numbers. Positive integers, you know, 1, 2, 3, and so on. You know, Z, set of all integers, all integers, positive integers, negative integers, and 0. You know, Q also, rationals, that includes fractional numbers. Numbers of the form P by Q, you know. Q should not be 0. 2 by 3, 4 by 3. You know, numbers which are not rationals are called irrationals. Numbers which are not rationals are called irrationals. That also you know. Irrationals which are root 2, root 3, all are called irrationals. Then you know R, which is all real numbers, set of all real numbers, which includes everything, which includes irrationals, rationals, integers, and natural numbers. So R is the biggest set. You also know this. We know these also. We know that n is a subset of z, z is a subset of q, and q is a subset of r. This much we know. r is the biggest set. Real numbers, rationals, all integers, and all natural numbers. Now here, we are going to put one more set in this list here. That's called the c, which is known as a set of complex numbers. So this is set of complex numbers complex numbers this we are going to see now so c is bigger than r all rational numbers are included in real numbers and every real numbers are included in complex number set c so what is c that's a question in our mind set of complex number which is basically nothing but set of ordered pairs of real numbers of the type a comma b where a and b both are real numbers what is definition of c c is nothing but what here set of complex numbers as i mentioned so what is that that is nothing but ordered pairs of numbers any ordered pair of numbers is called a complex number if I have 2 comma 3, so this is a complex number. This is a complex number. Any ordered pair of numbers is called complex number. If I have 4 comma 1, this is a complex number. If I have 1 by 2 comma 0, it's a complex number. Complex number. So when we have complex number in our mind that means you have ordered pair of numbers this is one way of defining this is indirectly nothing but r2 if you remember r cross r if you just recall so c is nothing but r cross r ordered pairs of real numbers what is set of complex numbers it's a set of ordered pairs of real numbers which is r2 which is r cross r when, when we have in our mind what is a complex number, that means it's an ordered pair of number. Any ordered pair. Ordered pair means combination of two numbers. If I have minus root 2 comma 3, this is also a complex number. If I have minus 1 by 4 comma 1, this is a complex number. Any ordered pair of, if I have 0 comma 1, this is a complex number. If I have... 0 comma 2 this is a complex number any ordered pair of numbers is called a complex number this is one way of defining now here so now we define one 
complex number. If I take ordered pair 0, 1, this is a complex number. So it is denoted by small i. Right? This is sometimes called uh, iota. It is called iota. It's a Greek letter, like you know, alpha, beta, and so on. Here, iota is a Greek letter. This this is read as iota. What is iota? Zero comma one. That's a special complex number. Iota is this. Later on, we'll see that i square can be sh proved that it is minus one. Remember, first time you are getting a square of some complex number equals to minus one. Earlier, you were not having, if you remember. But in complex number, it is possible. Remember. What is iota square? It is minus 1. We'll prove it. We'll prove it later on. So square of some complex number equals to minus 1. So you can write iota equals to root minus 1 if I take square root. Right? What is this iota? Iota is a Greek letter like alpha, beta, gamma, theta. This is read as iota or just i. What is i? That is root minus 1. In form of ordered pair, what is definition of i? It is ordered pair 0, 1. This we prove. We prove later on. That if you do i square, you will get the minus 1. Now if I write i cube, it is i square into i. But what is i square? It is minus 1. So you have minus iota, remember. i or iota, both are common terminology. What is i raised to 4? I can write i square into i square. What is iota square or i square? Here minus 1, minus 1 twice. So we'll get the 1. So what is i raised to 4 or i to raised to 4? 1. i raised to 5. I can write as i raised to 4 into i. i or iota square is minus, you know, sorry, it's 1. So you will get the 1 into i or iota. So you will get the iota. What is i raised to 6, for example? You can write i square into i raised to 4. But what is i square or iota square? Minus 1. What is i raised to 4? It is 1. So final answer is minus 1. Right? That way you can find the values of any higher power. For example, if I have i raised to, let's write 19. So I can write, you know, when you have raised to 4, it becomes 1. This is very important. Remember here, let me write. Iota raised to 4 is 1. Right? And here, Iota cube is minus Iota. That is not so important. But 1 is I square is minus 1. This is 1 important. And Iota raised to 4 is minus 1. Just 1. And here it is minus 1. So I know iota raised to 4 is 1. So I'll express in form of multiple of 4. So I can write as 16, then 2, so 18, and then iota raised to 1. Now this you can rewrite as iota raised to 4, whole raised to 4. i square you know minus 1, iota as it is. Now this is 1 raised to 4, because iota raised to 4 is 1, you know into minus 1 into iota so finally you'll get just minus iota so iota is 219 is this so when you have bigger power of iota you can reduce like this so this is first new symbol for you in this chapter iota or just i this is a greek letter you read as iota or simply i what is i it's a complex number. Why it is a complex number? Because as I told you, it's an ordered pair member. Any ordered pair of uh, real numbers is called a complex number. So this is a complex number, iota, 0, 1, special complex number. We call this as iota. Okay. Now this will prove, I have not proved right now. It's stated that when you write i square, you will get the minus 1. The first time you, you have such instance, remember, the square of something equals to minus 1. Earlier till stand standard, if you square something, if you remember, you used to do like this. Square is always greater than or equal to 0, if you remember. But now here you are getting square equals to minus 1. So I can write iota equals to root minus 1. 
So if I do inductively now i cube, it is minus i. If I do i raised to 4, i square into i square, minus 1, minus 1. So here, uh, iota raised to 4 is 1, remember, or i raised to 4 is 1. i square is minus 1, and so on. Any power of i can be reduced in terms of 1 and minus 1 and iota. So we'll use this. So this is one thing. Now, sometimes complex number is also defined like this. I told you earlier that complex number is nothing but any ordered pair of numbers. I told you here. C is A ordered pair A comma B that I mentioned earlier. Now, this can be re, uh, written in this way. A number in this form. A number in the form of in the form of a plus iota b is called complex numbers is called a is called a complex number is called a complex number any number which is in which form a plus iota b any number which is in which form a plus iota b remember i'll tell you this is just order pair a comma b remember later on not right now any number which is in form of a plus i b is called a complex number so whenever now onwards if you see iota symbol means it's a complex number remember here here a is called real part of the complex number and B is called imaginary part, remember. B is called imaginary part. There is nothing like imaginary, remember. Here A and B both are real numbers only. But you have iota inside this. So this become a complex number, remember. A and B are real numbers. But here A is called real part of the complex number. And B is called imaginary part of the complex number. So if I take small z equals to a plus i b, complex number is usually denoted by small z. If I take small z equals to a plus i b, then real part of z equals to a. And i m means imaginary part of z equals to b. Real part of the complex number is a. Imaginary part of the complex number is B. This is a complex number, remember. Now onwards, when we use, when you see any expression involving iota, means it is a complex number, remember. Uh, later on, we'll see that this is nothing but actually A comma B. This is just nothing but ordered pair A comma B. We'll see it. Right? And this is nothing but a complex number, as I told you. But... You can keep this way in your mind. Real part of the complex number is A. Imaginary part is B. What is I that you know? I is this. Where I is root minus 1. That we know. Iota. Okay. Like this. For example. 2 plus 3 I. It's a complex number. 4 minus Iota. It's a complex number. 7 by 2 plus half Iota. Complex number. Minus 9 by 2 plus 1, just iota is a complex number. So all are complex numbers, remember. Right? Everywhere i is involved, remember. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. Now, this should be there in your mind. When you come across 3i, that means it's a complex number. One more, some more examples. If I write just 4i, it's a complex number. If I write uh, minus root 2, plus i it's a complex number 7 by 2 plus uh, 3i it's a complex number minus 1 by 2 minus 7 by 2 iota it's a complex number all are examples of complex numbers right and each of this if i write this is nothing but the ordered pair actually 2 comma 3 we'll see it this is another way of writing. So as I told you, complex number is an ordered pair. So this is 2 comma 3. This is nothing but the 4 comma minus 1. 4 comma minus 1. This is nothing but this ordered pair. 7 by 2 comma 1 by 2. This is nothing but the minus 9 by 2 comma 1. Iota you are not going to write when you write in form of ordered pairs. 
this is nothing but here that independent term is not there so 0 comma coefficient of i which is 4 here minus root 2 comma 1 here 7 by 2 comma 3 here minus 1 by 2 comma minus 7 by 2 so this this i notations for complex numbers you can rewrite in form of ordered pairs like these also remember right it's a just a way of writing whether i write this or i write this both are same whether i write this or whether i write this both are same this is a complex number this is also a complex number okay so now you know complex number is always in which form a plus iota b form what's the real part the term which is free from i this is called real part what is the imaginary part coefficient of i real part imaginary part real part imaginary part minus one real part seven by two imaginary part one by two real part minus nine by two imaginary part is one not iota remember coefficient of iota is imaginary part real part is not this so real part is 0 imaginary part is 4 real part is minus root 2 imaginary part is 1 real part is 7 by 2 imaginary part is 3 real part is minus 1 by 2 imaginary part is minus 7 by 2 fine equal complex numbers so I'll take two complex number z1 equals to a plus iota b and z2 equals to c plus iota d two complex numbers real part a imaginary part b real part c imaginary part d then we say that two complex numbers are equal z1 equals to z2 double implies their corresponding real parts must be equal that is a equals to c and imaginary part that is b equals to d a equals to C and B equals to D. This is the definition. Two complex numbers are equal. Z1 equals to Z2 if and only the real and imaginary parts must be same. Okay. Now their addition. Addition and let me write subtraction also. So Z1 plus Z2, it is very simple, just add the real parts, that is A plus C, add the imaginary part, take I common, so B plus D, so this is their addition, adding real part, adding imaginary part, just taking I common, what is the subtraction, Z1 minus Z2, subtract the corresponding real part, A minus C plus iota here b minus b addition of the corresponding real parts here subtraction of the corresponding imaginary part like this if i have here two complex numbers for example z1 equals to 7 plus 2 iota z2 equals to let's try to 1 minus iota what is z1 plus z2 just add them straight forward so 7 plus 1 8 2i minus i that is just iota so this is again a complex number and what is the subtraction z1 minus z2 7 plus 2i minus 1 plus iota i'm oh, sorry just iota minus minus one plus so 7 minus 1 6 here it will be 3i. So this is also a complex number. Z1 plus Z2. Real plus real. Imaginary plus imaginary. Real minus real. 6 plus subtraction of the corresponding imaginary part. So this way we have addition. Okay. Now their multiplication. The next part is about their multiplication. Let's see multiplication of complex numbers. One complex number z1 equals to a plus iota b. z2 equals to c plus iota d. These are the two complex numbers. 
real part imaginary part real part imaginary part then the multiplication z1 into z2 equals to it is like this a plus ib into c plus id so just open the bracket as usual so this into this ac this into this that is ad iota this into this that is bc iota plus this into this that is i into i iota square into bd i have just opened the brackets now which two terms are free from iota one is this you know iota square is minus one this one is minus one you know here so ac minus bd this is the real part term which is free from iota now from the remaining two terms you take iota common so we'll get the ad plus bc so this is z1 into z2 ac minus bd plus iota ad plus bc product of two complex number it is as usual simply multiplication like this if i have 2 plus 3 iota one complex number into 1 plus 2 iota one complex number like z1 the other complex number z2 we are multiplying so 2 1 into 2 2 2 into 2 4 iota plus 3 iota and the last one 3 to the 6 into iota square and here you know this iota square would be just minus 1 this is minus 1 that you know so what I'll get 2 minus 6 and this is 4 plus 3 which is 7 iota so finally we'll get the minus 4 plus 7 iota product of two complex numbers this is also a complex number which is which is also in form of a plus ib hmm. now these are two three properties of complex numbers you know all these properties from uh, you know real numbers the one is here for two complex numbers if you find z1 plus z2 if you find z2 plus z1 these two are always equal if you remember this is called commutative property commutative laws or properties same also holds true for multiplication find z1 into z2 find z2 into z1 commutative property always true for any two complex numbers commutative property associativity for three complex number find z1 into z2 into z3 and you find uh, z1 into z2 into z3 similarly for addition z1 plus z2 plus z3 equals to z1 plus z2 plus z3 these two are always equal if you interchange the bracket this is called if you remember associative associative uh, property or associative laws for multiplication and addition you know it associative property commutative property commutative property means what order is not important whether i do z1 plus z2 or z2 plus z1 whether i do z1 into z2 or z2 into z1 these are always equal associative means you can rearrange the brackets like this so identity or unit complex number so first for addition for addition so if you have any complex number z equals to let me write a plus i b then you can write 0 equals to 0 plus iota 0 as a unit complex number this is a unit or identity complex number identity complex number for which operation addition why because because z plus if i write 0 if i change the order 0 plus z again you will get the z that's why this is called zero or unit identity number for addition 
for multiplication for multiplication if i take z equals to a plus iota b then you take uh, 1 plus iota into 0 you take this so then uh, you can verify that z into here 1 plus iota into 0 if you do reverse 1 plus iota into 0 into z so again you will get the z so this is called uh, here this one or this one that's called a unit complex number or identity complex number unit or identity for multiplication for multiplication these are from real numbers only you know for real numbers for reals uh, x into 1 is always x so this is called identity for multiplication so we have taken the same number but I wrote just plus 1 into 0 for addition you know x plus 0 is again x so this is called unit or identity for addition what I did just I wrote 0 plus iota 0 it's from real number system only remember just we are putting plus i0 so this is here called unit or identity for multiplication and 0 plus iota 0 that's for addition remember next is about multiplicative inverse just you recall from numbers what what's this concept recall from numbers if you are given number 2 find number whose product with 2 gives us 1 which is unit number you know unit or identity for multiplication so here appropriate number is 1 upon 2 so 2 into 1 upon 2 gives us 1 if you are given 3 by 4 then find one number whose product with 3 by 4 gives us 1 which is unit number so here appropriate number is 4 by 3 and this we write as 3 by 4 raised to minus 1 this we sometimes call reciprocal so same concept we have here for complex numbers also uh, if you are given this complex number z equals to a plus iota b we find z raised to minus 1 this is called multiplicative window we find this equals to some a plus ib form such that z into its inverse equals to even if you do reverse you will get unit or identity complex number that is 1 plus iota 0 right. their unit number is 1 in real numbers this is 4, 4r real numbers 4r remember now we are talking about what complex numbers here so you must have 1 plus iota 0 this is unit or identity complex number what I'm trying to tell you is for given complex number z this is given to you we find z inverse this is called multiplicative inverse z inverse which is called multiplicative inverse such that z into its inverse if you do reverse z inverse into z you will get the 1 plus iota 0 that's unit number so here also I'm just writing without proof so complex number is a upon a square plus b square <coughs> here minus b upon a square plus b square into iota this is a z inverse it can be proved very easily not a big task but this is a required complex number a upon a square plus b square if you are plus then your minus opposite sign minus b upon a square plus b square into iota this is a complex number iota is there this is called multiplicative inverse of given complex number z you multiply as i explained you do z into z inverse you will get the 1 plus iota 0 you can verify so this is called here multiplicative inverse is called 
multiplicative inverse of z multiplicative inverse of the complex number z remember z raised to minus 1 for example if you write z equals to let me write 2 plus 3 iota what's its multiplicative inverse z raised to minus 1 real part upon 2 square plus 3 square that is 4 plus 9 13 minus 3 upon I am just using this formula 4 plus 9 that is 13 iota this is the multiplicative inverse how do I check whether this is right or wrong this much you can do find z into its inverse you will notice you will get just 1 plus iota 0 you can verify but you can just verify this one so therefore this is called multiplicative inverse of the given complex number z if i take one more example here suppose i have let's write one more now next suppose i have z equals to 2 minus iota so it's multiplicative inverse that is 2 upon a square plus b square that is 4 b is minus 1 but it would be minus 1 square so 4 plus 1 5 minus sign is already there so they become plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 iota so z inverse will be 2 upon 5 plus 1 upon 5 iota this is called multiplicative inverse of z it means if I do z into z inverse or if I do reverse z inverse into z you will get the 1 plus iota into 0 that is a unique complex number this is always true but we are writing by formula here remember ok suppose I have one more z equals to let us write just iota so if I express in a plus ib form I can write 1 into iota so here a is 0 b is 1 remember so what is its multiplicative inverse that is a upon that is 0 upon 0 square plus 1 square which is 0 plus 1 plus here minus sign will be there because you have plus so minus 1 upon a square plus b square that is 0 plus 1 into iota now this is just 0 so z inverse would be 0 and minus 1 iota so therefore you can write just z inverse equals to minus i. so this is a multiplicative inverse of the complex number z ok <clears throat> so after doing this much now we can go for first exercise so exercise 5.1 here from 1 to 10 question number 1 to 10 you are asked to express in a plus ib form so each of these is a complex number you want to express in this form first question like this 5 iota into minus 3 by 5 iota so here 5 5 will get cancelled you get minus 3 iota square the simple multiplication but what is iota square minus 1 so this become 3 iota square is minus 1 so this become 3 this is in a plus ib form if you want to write you can write 3 plus iota 0 this is also fine but still if you want in form a plus ib form here a is 3 b is 0 remember imaginary term is not there question number 2 just for our convenience I'll call that as Z. Z equals to I raise to 9 plus I raise to 19. Now I already explain how to simplify a bigger power of I. So you can write I raise to 8 into I. Why wrote in 8 form? Because I know I raise to 4 is 1. This I can write as 16 because 4 is 1 i square i know minus 1 into i such things you know already explained now what is this this is 1 so here you are left with i i raise to 8 is i raise to 4 the whole square so i raise to 4 is 1 square so 1 so this is 1 into iota just iota 
What is I raised to 4? Again 1 as I explained earlier. What is I square? Minus 1. And this iota as it is. So you are getting iota minus iota which is 0. So this is a 0 complex number. So you can write 0 plus iota 0 if you want to write. You, you can keep in this form also, which is also perfectly right, remember. Let me go for question number 8. The question is expressed in A plus IB form. I is involved, so it must be a complex number. And therefore, you can express in A plus IB form. Let me call this as Z here. So I can rewrite like this. 1 minus iota squared and then whole squared. Now this is like a minus b whole squared. So 1 minus 2 iota last term is iota squared. The whole square. What I, what I did a minus b whole square. You know iota squared is minus 1. You know that iota squared is minus 1 here. So this minus 1 and plus 1 will goes away. So you are just getting 2 iota whole square. So this is nothing but 4 iota square. But what is in turn iota square? Minus 1. Iota square is minus 1. So this complex number is just minus 4. Or you can write like this minus 4 plus iota 0 if you want to write. Both are correct. So here A is minus 4, B is 0, remember. Question number uh, 11, 12 and 13 are about. Question number 11, 12 and 13. These three questions are about multiplicative inverse. So they are just, you know it. I'll just do one for you. Question number 11, let me call that as Z here, 4 minus 3 out. So what is its inverse? Z inverse, multiplicative inverse. 4 upon 9 plus 16, opposite sign, plus 3 upon 9 plus 16 out. Don't forget to put out, I remember. So we get the 4 upon 25 plus 3 upon 25 out. Just I'm reminding you every time this is a multiplicative universe of Z means if you multiply these two you will get the unit complex number 1 comma 0 and question number 14 that is again expressed in A plus IB form so you simplify carefully and uh, do it and let's see what you are getting.